okay, at this point in time, you've designed your system, you've got your entries, you've got your exits, you've got your money management rules, it's all written down, documented, but before you start trading, I wanted to find out, if you had a string of 10 losses in a row, if you took that trading system and started trading it tomorrow, and you had loss after loss after loss after loss until you had 10 losses in a row, what would you do at that point in time? Would you stop trading? Would you begin to question yourself and your own trading system and your trading ability? Or would you continue to follow the system blindlessly, just knowing that you must follow your system? We talk about it before in previous chapters, the importance of having the confidence and the discipline to be able to follow through in your traders, uh, in, through with your trades. But how hard is that going to be if you've had a string of 10 losses in a row? I think that would be extremely difficult. That's, that's blind faith. You need to know more about your system before you can have the confidence to follow through. And that's what this chapter is all about. Through the process we call backtesting, we're going to take your trading system and we're going to build your confidence with it. We're going to take that system and look over historical data and ask, how would your trading system have performed if we'd traded it in the past? Now this doesn't give you any indication as to how it's going to trade in the future, but it can give you some insights into the metrics of your system to hopefully give you the confidence to follow through. What we're looking to do is set a baseline so that way you know if your trading system trades outside of that baseline, you know whether or not alarm bells should be going off or not. And that's why backtesting is so important. There really are only three ways that you can backtest a system. You can either do mechanical backtesting through the use of software, we can do manual backtesting which is a little bit more of a by hand process, or we can do paper trading. Now paper trading isn't really back testing per se, but I think it goes into this testing category. Each of them have their pros and their cons. The real key is just to make sure you do some form of back testing. If we look at uh, mechanical back testing, mechanical back testing is all about taking your system, trying to define it down into those very clear set of rules, and then loading it into your software and having the software back test it over a period of time. Now, the problems with mechanical back testing, I suppose, firstly, is uh, if you're not very computer literate or savvy, it can be quite hard to program a system in for back testing. And a lot of people never actually do testing because they find it so hard to get it into the software. And the, the other problem with back testing is that you can't necessarily always program in all the events. How would you program in something like September 11? Usually, if you were trading a system, that might have got you to stop trading, but when backtesting a system using software, because it's very objective, uh, it's not going to take into account those outside events that are hard to program. Then we've got manual backtesting, which is the one we do by hand. Now, it's a much more laborious process. Typically speaking, we don't do it as, over as long a period, but the benefit is if uh, you find software and things like that uh, a little bit more complicated. It's much easier to implement. On the flip side, some of the, the problems can be at times there's human error and there's also room for subjectivity. Whereas, you know, if you're using software, it's either right or it's wrong. Whereas with, uh, you know, when you're doing it manually, there's a few more shades of grey. And then finally we've got paper trading. Now paper trading is all about taking your trading system and then trading it in real time just without money. Now the, there are similar problems that you have with uh, manual back testing as you do have with paper trading and you just need to be mindful of those. I suppose the real key is just to make sure that you're doing some form of testing. So that way you can have the confidence to know when you have got you know, a string of 10 losses in a row, you can say, well, historically, my trading system had a string of 10 losses in a row, yet it was still hugely profitable. As I said, any backtesting method has its flaws and its limitations. The real key is just to do some form of backtesting. What you get and gain out of doing the backtesting is an intimate understanding of your system. It really is a key component of designing a trading plan. And I know it feels like in each chapter I'm saying this area is the most important or that area is the most important, but the fact is 
back testing ties it all together. When you do back testing, you understand the way your system works, you understand the relationship between your entries and your exits and your money management. It all begins to tie together. So if I can just impress upon you the importance of back testing your system. Why not go ahead, do some testing, and post the comments below and share with others so they too can have the confidence to start back testing their system.